ます。In this video, we'll be going over the schedule page and some of its features in your Vault software. Please be aware that many of these features may be permission-based. If you don't have access to one and think you should, please contact your local Vault administrator. To begin, we'll navigate to the schedule page. Click on the plus button in the corner to create a new scheduled recording. Select the room you would like to use and fill in your selected information template with all required fields to begin the recording. Now, select a date, time, and duration for the schedule. If you would like the recording to have recurring instances, select the closest range from the repeat drop-down menu. This drop-down will have options for daily, weekly, or monthly recurrences of recordings and the range of time these recordings will be made over. Choosing daily for your recurrence will set it to record at the same time every day. The weekly recurrence option will allow you to choose days of the week that the recording will occur by checking the boxes next to the desired days. Finally, the monthly recurrence will set off a recording the same day every month. As an example, this scheduled recording will kick off on the first of every month for three hours, starting at 1 p.m. You will note that the Vault software uses a 24-hour clock instead of using a 12-hour a.m. or p.m. clock. This is to be certain you won't have a recording at 1 a.m. instead of 1 p.m. After choosing how you'd like to repeat the scheduled recording, you can set how long it will repeat. Choosing no end date will set the newly created schedule to continue recording instances forever. Selecting the end after option will allow you to choose the number of occurrences this scheduled recording will take place over. If you select the end at option, a calendar will pop up, allowing you to select a day, month, and year. This selected date will be the final day the created schedule will exist in your Vault system. The next tab will allow you to set the sharing options of the video. Being that you must have permissions in place to create a scheduled recording, you must also set who has access to view the video after the recording has been made. This may be done by selecting whole groups or individual users from your system. In the Author tab, you assign who owns the video after it has been recorded. This is usually done so higher-level permission groups hold video rights, such as the ability to download or delete a video from the software. The Retention tab will allow you to set how long the video will remain on the server. This can be set to any length of time, and the default option sets the length of time to the author's specific retention. Please be aware that the author may change the retention length to whatever is needed after the recording has been completed. In the Control tab, you may set your camera to a preset location in the room at the start of the scheduled recording. To utilize the Control tab, you must have a Pan, Tilt, Zoom, or PTZ, camera in the room you will be recording. For more tips on camera control and presetting location, please view our Observe Page video. When you are satisfied with the information entered, Click Create at the bottom of the page to add your schedule to the list. Now that we've made a schedule, we can add exceptions to the schedule. Exceptions are preset dates that won't be included in scheduled recordings, recurring or not. To begin, we'll click the Exception button next to the New Schedule button in the corner of the page. Here, we'll specify a date to be exempt from the schedule and set a name for the exception. When your day has been set, click Save. Days that have scheduled recording exceptions are now marked in red on the calendar. 
Exceptions only work for one calendar day, so you may find it best to set exceptions with a list of preset days. Days like Christmas or Easter are commonly used for this purpose. To view all exceptions in your system, click View All at the top of the exception window. These are listed chronologically from when they were entered into the system. It is also good to note that though you may set an exception on the schedule, stopping all automated recordings, you will still be able to manually start a recording, even on these days that have been marked as exceptions. To search through your scheduled recordings, you can click on the search bar. Searching in this way will allow you to find a scheduled recording based upon a keyword, name, or date. In the top right corner of the screen, you will find the view matrices. There is a list view and a daily timetable view. The way you view schedules can be changed in your group permissions. When you hover over a scheduled item, it gives options to edit or delete at the right. The edit button will allow you to edit a scheduled recording, change sharing options, change authors, retention time, and PTZ preset control. Selecting the delete button presents options to delete all instances or delete the next occurrence. Deleting the next occurrence will set the next associated scheduled recording to not take place. The following occurrence of the schedule will still take place at the set time. If you choose to delete all remaining instances, it will remove this item from the schedule entirely. While a scheduled recording is taking place, hovering over the instance will give you additional options for editing it. You can choose to stop the recording at the current time by selecting the Stop button. You can also add or subtract time from the scheduled recording by selecting the Time button. Time to be added will have a plus symbol next to it, and you can remove time from the recording by selecting the minus symbol and selecting a length of time to remove. This concludes our video segment on the schedule page and its features. If you have any additional questions, please contact your local Vault administrator.